So when we think about identifying minerals, you can see all of these minerals, these six minerals that you see in front of you are vastly different from each other. And in order to identify them by their name, we're going to take a look at their properties, their physical properties, which are characteristics that make them unique. So continue on and we will talk about all of the properties. Okay, so when talking about the property of color, you can see that these six minerals in front of you are six different colors. Um, we have green, we have clear, we have white, um, some spotted colors. So in order to test the um, property of color, what we need to do is observe the color of the mineral, very simply. However, when you observe the color of a mineral, you can't just identify a mineral by its color because minerals like quartz come in many different colors. They come in blue, purple, pink, white, and various colors. So you just saw that transparency is what you can see through. But now we're gonna look at how you test transparency. So how to test transparency, you'll notice we have three different minerals here. Um, and what you wanna do is you wanna place the mineral on a printed page. And when you look through the mineral, you wanna look through, so this first one, I would call transparent because I can see right through that mineral. The next one I would call translucent because I can see through it, but it is blurry. And this final one I would definitely call opaque because I cannot see any of those letters behind it. Recall that luster is how shiny something is. So when we look at luster, um, something either has a metallic luster or a non-metallic luster. Something that is metallic is going to um, look like this, have some kind of metal inside of it. This is a uh, pyrite. It's actually called fool's gold. So that would be a metallic luster. All of these would be non-metallic luster. And we would look at these. This is would be called dull because it's not going to reflect much light, if any at all. This one I would call glassy because it is reflecting some light. And then this last one, I'm gonna call brilliant because it reflects a lot of light. So this is light refraction or double refraction. How we test this is by placing our mineral onto a printed page. So I'm going to place it right over top of here. And you can see that if I look through this mineral, that you can see that word copper twice. However, if I change minerals, this one, I can only see copper once. So this mineral does not have double or light refraction, yet this one does. So when we test hardness is to figure out um, the hardness of a material, and we're gonna use a scratch test. So if I use, um, I'm gonna use a glass plate and a copper plate to see the hardness of this mineral. So if I scratch this mineral one time on my copper, I can see that it has made a definite mark. And then if I scratch it right here on my glass and I feel it with my finger, I can also see that it has made a visible mark. So this mineral right here would be harder than copper and harder than glass because it scratches. However, I take this mineral and I scratch it right here on the copper. You can see it does make a scratch right there on the copper. And if I scratch it on the glass, it does not make a scratch on the glass. So this mineral would be harder than copper, but softer than glass. So if I want to take it a step further, there's a scale called the Mohs Hardness Scale. And it is a scale that dates back um, a long, long time ago and scientists still use it today. 
with the hardest mineral being a diamond at a number 10 and the softest being talc at a number one. So I could place this mineral right in here and say, well, it's about in between copper and glass, so it's in between a three to a 5.5. But this one right here, because it scratched both of them, it's going to be above a 5.5, so somewhere in this range. Streak color is the powder that is left behind when the mineral is scratched upon a ceramic streak plate. So here you see our ceramic streak plate, and I'll take a mineral here. I just need to scratch it once along, and you'll see it leaves behind a white powder. This mineral right here, once along, leaves a gray color. And then this one, pretty exciting. It's gray looking, but if you look, at the color, it's a reddish brown streak. So go ahead and test some streak color. Okay, so when we're looking at um, reaction to acid, we're gonna make sure that we have our goggles on because we are be, we're gonna be working with a chemical type called hydrochloric acid. Um, and if this were to get on your skin, that's all you need to do is wash it off. So we're gonna place one drop of acid onto each of these minerals. If it bubbles, it does have a reaction to acid, and if it does not bubble, there is no reaction to acid. So I'm gonna place on my goggles. I'm gonna place one drop of acid here, and I'm going to watch. And I can see that that acid is bubbling up on that mineral, so that mineral does have a reaction to acid. Now this mineral looks very similar to the other. However, when I place the acid on there, there is no reaction to acid. That will help me to identify the mineral. So because we, when we talk about crystal shape, because minerals are three-dimensional, we're looking at some geometric solids. We have a tetrahedron that's four-sided, a cube that's six-sided, an octahedron that's eight-sided, and a rhombohedron that's six-sided. So if we look at this mineral right here, and we take a look at it very carefully, we would notice and we would classify it by its crystal shape as a rhombohedron. So simply when we test the property of magnetism, we're just going to see if the mineral attra is attracted to a magnet or not. So if I touch this one here, that one, it doesn't seem to be magnetic. And then this one, I can actually feel it taking to there, and this one is magnetic. So we have one that does have magnetic properties and one that does not. So next we speak about how a mineral breaks. And minerals can break two different ways. They can fracture, which is this way, and they can also go through a process called cleavage or cleave. You'll notice that these ones that cleave are very simple shapes. And actually, if I were to hit this with a hammer right now, it would make the exact same shape like um, a rhombohedron. And this one right here, this is mica, and this actually comes in flakes and if I can pull one off here, there we go. We can see that this is how this cleaves in small thin sheets. However, these um, have fracture and you'll notice that they don't have any real shape to them. They're very just different looking, odd looking shapes. I wouldn't classify them um, having any specific um, planes that they break on.